Hey there YouTube, um, Big Tobacco here from First Person Shooters. Um, this is a video response uh, trigger replacement on the T-SIS 1911. And I have it in condition one right here. So we'll clear it and So we have it cleared, and I realized um, a friend of mine bought me uh, this tech mat. Um, it's really cool; has all your parts listed and numbered, and you know all the inner workings. Uh, Explody view of a of a 1911, and I thought it would be really cool to do the video on that. And then I realized that my gun is black, <laughs> and you really can't see anything against that background so I, uh, <laughs> I went to do a test on it and I realized that I couldn't see anything when I was filming well I mean I could but the camera wasn't picking it up so I got that so <laughs> pretty funny uh, anyway let's just go ahead and dive right into it um, I'm gonna start with the uh, grips go ahead and take those out. Um, this isn't something that's really uh, needed to do this, but I find that it's a whole lot easier just because you have better access to the inside of the gun. And these cobalts are freaking awesome. Got them for Christmas and they weren't even on my radar. I freaking love them. I've used them three times a week. So, I, I will be replacing the the uh, grips on this at some point in time. Um, I've seen a few on uh, Amazon that I like. So, I'm thinking about some pearlized ones. I think they'd contrast the black fairly well. Not that I dislike these walnut grips. I think that these walnut grips are great. I, I just think that walnut grips look better on a on a nickel plated gun than they do on a, on a blue. Of course if I had a nickel plated one I'd probably get black grips for it. So <laughs> that's me. Never happy. So now your grips, especially on the T-SIS, uh, they're they're pretty tight on there. They um, the holes they drilled for them are pretty tight, so they they fit the bushings really really well. Um, I get like a small screwdriver or something, just put them in the mag well and uh, push up against, and then, then it should be fairly easy to to just take them off after that. Um, after you get the first one off, you can pretty much use your thumbs to get the second one out. Those aside, and we got that pretty neat. Um, I'm gonna go and go ahead and uh, field strip it really quick. Uh, the reason why we're gonna do this is um, uh, like on a full size guide rod 1911. You're not gonna have um, you're not gonna have this issue. You could just take the whole um, slide assembly off. Um, you can't on this because it's a uh, it's a it's a partial guide rod or a half guide rod or short guide rod or however you want to say. So you just push in your little D there. Um, I like to make up words when I'm working because uh <laughs> now um here you can wear safety goggles blah 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 because this thing is propensity to shoot out. I don't wear safety goggles because well I don't know. <laughs> I just like to get hit in the Um, if you just pull back um, on the slide while pushing um, your takedown uh, button on the other side, and I say takedown button, it's part of the the slide lock. Um, you just push on this side and it'll pop it out on that side. So make sure it's lined up and you should be able to wiggle it out of there with not too much effort. After that, the assembly should slide right off, and that's what you got there. Um, just for 
shiggles. We're gonna go ahead and take the guide rod out. That's what I'm talking about. The it's a short guide rod. Um, if you try to take the slide off without um, field stripping it like this, um, your guide rod is gonna it's the, all the tension from the spring. It's gonna bow out and probably pop out of the gun. Um, make sure this little um, this little link there is pushed forward so it can fit through um, the barrel or the end of the slide. Um, take your load. It only comes out one way. It's got a little notch cut in it. It'll only like you got to slide it to open it and then slide it back to to get it out. <clears throat> Boom. Boom. Okay. So now we're down to brass tacks. Um, got your. Um, don't uh, pull the trigger um, without being able to catch the hammer at this point because without the slide there you could damage, um, damage the gun. Um, just little parts there. Um, okay. So we'll get it. I have blocks for such an occasion. I actually, um, <laughs> I use these to raise a bed in my spare room, um, just to um, have a little bit more storage space under the bed. Um, <laughs> but um, use use whatever you want to to do this, um, since they're about the same height. This is the pin that holds the um, mainspring housing in. So, I don't know if I'm far enough up on the camera for you guys to see that, but um, you're just going to pretty much tap that out. And after doing so, the mainspring housing should slide right out with your thumb. Now, there is a little bit of tension when you first start it, um, just because the hammer the strut fits inside the mainspring housing so that it's pushing on it give it some tension so there's your mainspring housing I'm not going to disassemble that because well I can probably show you that in a later video but that's kind of boring and uh, <laughs> like if I wanted to get a flat mainspring housing I would probably just buy the whole assembly already together and not even try to mess with this okay so from here um, you're gonna have to get your now let's get these out of the way you're going to have to get your uh, grip safety off and to get your grip safety off you're going to have to take your thumb safety. Your thumb safety actually holds your grip safety in place. So um, you're not going to push it all the way up like um, there's a um, essentially if it's engaged it's pushed all the way up. Um, you're going to push push it all the way up first and then kind of pull it back a little bit and find the sweet spot and then you should be able to wiggle it out. So to do that the hammer's got to be back. Take a little bit of that. Uh, um, if it's being stiff from the underside, um, I have a pair of tweezers because, well, I'll show you that a little bit later on. Um, you can um, get up under there and kind of, once you find your sweet spot, kind of give it a little wedge. You're not going to want to do too much. I mean, even though I'm, I am going to be replacing this at some point in time, I want to put some more stainless parts on it. can't see with my fingers there. Sorry. I have to do this off off camera. <laughs> Not that I don't want you guys to see this. Okay. Sorry. It's just wiggling it back and forth and I had to see where it was. So. Um, now, I would, I, I don't know if this is going to be true, but, but um, this right here is your little plunger. Um, that has a propensity in some 1911s to pop out when you're doing this. Um, uh, it's good when you're pulling the thumb safety to kind of cup your hand behind it, um, cup one hand behind it, so that way you can kind of catch it if it does spring out. My particular uh, T6 1911 does not do that because it's uh, still stiff. 
um, but if you want to you can pull it out um, there's not really a need to I don't think so I just leave it in there you can actually have that stay in there and do everything that you're trying to accomplish so there's your thumb safety um, after your thumb safety is up your grip safety should be able to just slide right out the back but to do so I would say let the hammer back down and you don't really um, need to worry about it springing forward because you've already pulled your main spring housing out and that's what's going to force your hammer to fall and without that you're really not going to need it. As you see the grip safety pretty much just comes right off. So. And that being said the leaf spring has already decided that it wants to come out too so sometimes they will sometimes they won't it just depends on your your particular gun and how how tight this is. Uh, this is a a spring that's got three different sections to it. Um, uh, one part, um, this part, the part that sticks out, that's for the grip safety. I'll actually give tension to the grip safety. Um, and your other two, one of them rides on the uh, sear and the, the other one fits underneath the, the disconnect. I'll show you that here in a second. So, uh, let spring aside. Okay, so now you got your um, hammer strut and your hammer in there. Pretty much they're on the same hinge. So, and that just pops right out. Um, this is uh, pinned in from the left to the right. So, you just flip your gun over. And I got a toothpick here. Um, toothpick's great because uh, it's not going to scratch or finish at all. So, and it has multiple purposes. And I'll show you that here in a second and that comes right out easy peasy lemon squeezy okay so now we're down to uh, the sear I don't know if you guys can see that or not but you got the sear in here uh, rock that back and forth and the disconnect which actually sticks up through this hole here on the top of the gun so there was no warning there my uh, I just ran out of memory on the camera. <laughs> so, sorry about that. It just beeped and it was over. <laughs> so we were at the pin that holds in the disconnect and the sear. Um, and from here you can just use a toothpick again. Um, should just push and it'll start coming out. So then you can just pull it out the rest of the way. And your sear will drop out easy and your disconnect if it is stuck in there you can just kind of push on a little bit and it'll pop out as well and what I like to do from here um, this little flat piece right here um, kind of shaped like a harpoon tip or whatever um, the flat side um, sits rests against the trigger bow um, and the sear the pointy side is up and facing towards the shooter so it sits like that and you can just keep it all together just put the pin back through and just leave that all together so that way you don't lose any of your pieces because um, gun won't work without it <laughs> and from here there's one last thing to do and that is your mag release so this little button right here um, that's pretty cool uh, the way they've set um, set it up is an interesting design essentially you just compress the spring on the inside and you turn the bolt and it holds uh, there's a little pin inside that will actually hold it in place um, so that way you can drop it so to do that you just press on it like you're trying to eject the mag and you drop your screwdriver inside and turn it one time in far enough. And it should hold open just like that. And the cool thing about that is it just drops right out. And it'll be under pressure the entire time you've got it sitting there. Um, so it's just waiting to pop back out once you turn that once you turn that screw again. Um, 
from here, you're ready to replace your um, trigger. And I, I just got a, a match trigger from from uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Midway USA. Um, I just did a search from price low to high. Like I, you know, didn't want to spend a whole lot of money um, fixing up my um, my gun, but so. And here, I filed this down like you're going to have to because um, they're fairly large and they want you to customize it to your liking. Um, what I used was just this little file. It's uh, curved on one side and it's flat on the other. Um, so I just used the flat to file it down um, to my liking. And then I use the curve to go on the inside of the trigger and actually take a little bit of the material off of there as well to um, make it more comfortable to my trigger pull. Um, and you can do that, just put it in the gun, um, put it in the frame rather, and kind of hold it there, or hold it there with your finger, and just feel yourself like that. Um, feel how, it, how you like it, um, if you want more or less. Um, and you can pretty much file it to your angle. Um, so I did that, and I also um, I took a Dremel. We're going to pass it through there. Get <laughs> oil on it. Um, I took a Dremel to it to polish it up just a little bit more, make it a little more shiny, which is kind of nice. I also used the polishing tip on on my Dremel to polish up the sides of the trigger bow, and I did that so that it would slide a little easier inside the frame. There are two little runner grooves in there, and that's the guide for the, the trigger. And the trigger sits um, uh, heavy side down, um, so the trigger bow itself is going to sit further up. Now, you can customize it how you like, and if it's too stiff inside your gun, I recommend bending in the bows a little bit, um, just a little bit. And um, you can always use your magazine to guide you because if you push it in too far um, it'll grind against the magazine too much and mine free floats on the magazine fairly well but um, it's just a little bit tight but I don't care if I get too many because uh, there I mean it's gonna scratch a little bit I'm not it's not it's just the right thing to me but I mean however you want to do it if you want a, a tighter trigger pull or whatever um, I have the old uh, trigger here and like just feeling them, you can feel how much heavier this this trigger is. Um, this is a stainless, um, blued stainless trigger, and the bows themselves are about the same size. I want to say that this one is a little bit longer of a bow, but a shorter trigger. The overall length between the two, um, this one is actually longer than this one overall from top to bottom. So when you stand them up there, I don't know if you can see, one is longer than the other. So, but that being said, get your new trigger and you're just going to drop it in place after, you know, after you customize your fit or anything. <laughs> and you're pretty much ready to go. Um, now, I did talk about replacing the hammer and I just bought the hammer by itself and that was a mistake for me um, I should not have done that let's get this file out of here don't want any of the blue pieces rubbing up against your file um, that was a mistake for me just buying the hammer by itself um, I should have bought the strut and the strut pin as well um, I did not and I had to remove the uh, old strut pin from the original hammer which I still have here just a little spur hammer um, I didn't really care for it too much but so I got rid of that um, well, I got rid of it obviously I still have it in a bag um, and I, I replaced it with this but the pin was in so tight that I mean I had to get like penetrating uh, oil to actually get in there let it sit for a while so I could actually get it out it was a really really tight fit um, it was way too much work 
to get that out. So I say if you're going to get a hammer, go ahead and spend the extra whatever, six bucks to get a new strut and the two dollars to get the new pin just to, <laughs> just to save yourself hours of intensive labor, which sucked. <laughs>